Um, Katie, let's start with you. You started the Fraction Research Foundation to find a way to help your son Andy and other people with Fragile X. Tell us more about what Fragile X is and how you went about starting this foundation. Well, Brad, Fragile X is the most common inherited cause of autism and intellectual disabilities. And when Andy was diagnosed back in the early 90s, we had no idea, we had never heard of it before. Um, it did, it was devastating. We, um, we being my husband, Mike Tranfali and I went off to the first uh, research conference we could find on Fragile X, which was a couple weeks later in Canada. And we met the researchers working on it. And I'll still, I remember there were five. And that was all the people in the world, really, that were focused on something to help. Yeah. And so we went home and we started Fraxa. Wow, so your son was involved uh, with a drug trial that proved to be successful, but then the trial actually ended. So walk us through what improvements you saw in your son uh, and how did you sort of get him into the program to try it out in the beginning? How we got him in is that Fraxa had funded the basic research in flies and mice and, and test tubes to come up with this kind of drug. And so we were very excited about it for years and we interacted with all the researchers. Uh, we helped organize the trials. And so it was ironic, my son was probably the last person enrolled in the trial. But he was enrolled. We saw improvements, but they were temporary. And to fast forward through, what we think that we know is that tolerance developed to the drug. And so now we're funding research at MIT to follow that up, and yes, indeed, there is tolerance, at least in mouse studies. What did I see in Andy? He opened up, he talked more, he was less anxious, he went to a little party, he responded in normal timing. It was the best thing that could have happened. It was heartbreaking when it started to fade, but what it did show us is that we could do this, right. that it's in there, even wow. though he's 29. Absolutely. Um, Anita, I want to bring you into this as well. In the age of social media and the age of these challenges, ice bucket challenges to really right. put more attention around some of these diseases and finding a cure, how has social media and technology played a role in getting the message out there from, from the chapter's position as well? Well, the chapters, have, the chapters have, have benefited greatly from social media, even in terms of supporting each other. Um, a parent who is going through a really hard time with her child can log on um, to Facebook and there'll be somebody around the world, no matter what time of day or night, who will respond and be able to help that parent. Um, so, from the support standpoint, it's been it's been really great, and of course, of course, fundraising, publicizing events. Um, in fact, we're having a walk uh, on the 18th okay. um, over the Brooklyn Bridge, and publicizing it on Facebook has been great. Excellent stuff. So, very helpful to have social media, the power of social media, to raise awareness. Yes, absolutely. All right, Katie Clapp, president of Fraxer Research Foundation, and Anita Abrahamins uh, of Greater New York City Chapter. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Thank, Thank you. So